Good day, grade 7. In this video, we will discuss phrases and clauses. Our learning target for this session is I can identify phrases and clauses. Since we have been discussing Philippine literature in the pre colonial period, let's take a look at this proverb by our national hero, Dr. Jose P. Rizal. He who does not love his mother tongue is worse than a rotten fish. In Filipino, its translation is, Ang hindi marunong magmahal sa sariling wika ay mahigit pa sa mabaho at malansang isda. This sentence, like any other sentences, is composed of different group of words. Who does not love his mother tongue is worse than a rotten fish. Some of these groups of words do not have a subject nor a predicate, while some have both a subject and a verb. Hence, a sentence may contain several phrases and clauses. Now, what are phrases and clauses? Phrases are a group of words that do not have a subject nor a predicate. On the other hand, clauses are a group of words that have both subject and a verb. Let's dig deeper on phrases and clauses. First stop, let's discuss phrases. Phrases are one or more words that form a meaningful grammatical unit within a clause. Therefore, phrases are shorter than clauses. It cannot stand alone, and it does not have a complete meaning. There are several types of phrases. The first type is a noun phrase. To identify a noun phrase, first look for the noun and the word that modifies it, like possessive pronoun, article, adjective, or preposition. For example, a rolling stone gathers no more. A rolling stone is the noun phrase in this sentence. The noun is stone and the rolling is the adjective that describes it. Noun phrases can act as a subject in the sentence. A long narrative poem is called an epic. The noun phrase in this sentence is a long narrative poem. This acts as the subject because it answers the question, what is an epic? Or, what is the sentence all about? Noun phrases can also act as an object in the sentence. Folk tales teach important lessons. In this sentence, the subject is folktales. The verb is teach. Since the verb is a transitive verb, it needs a direct object, which is important lessons. The noun phrase is important lessons. The noun is lesson and the word that modifies it is important. Lastly, noun phrases can act as a complement. An epic poem is a long narrative poem. This sentence uses the linking verb is and the phrase a long narrative poem describes an epic poem. In the phrase a long narrative poem, the noun is the poem. And a long narrative are its modifiers. Moving on to another example of a phrase is a verb phrase. Just like noun phrases, a verb phrase comprises of the verb itself and its modifiers such as auxiliary verbs and models. For example, if you persevere, you will reap the fruits of your labor. Remember that a verb is only one word, but a verb phrase contains the verb. In this sentence, it's reap and the model verb will. Another example, a sleeping shrimp is carried away by the current. In this sentence, the verbal phrase is, is carried away. Carried away is the main verb, but we include the auxiliary verb, is. Strength is repeated by strategy. In this sentence, the verb phrase is, is defeated. The main verb is defeated and the auxiliary verb is, is also included. Another type of phrase is a gerund phrase. A gerund is formed with verbs but act as a noun. They are easy to identify as it is a verb with ing tag as its tail. A gerund phrase, on the other hand, 
has a verbal with the ing ending plus other modifiers or complements. It may either serve as a noun or an adjective. For example, knowing Philippine literature is fun. The subject of this sentence is knowing Philippine literature. The gerund is knowing and the gerund phrase is knowing Philippine literature as the verbal knowing ends in ing and it acts as the subject of the sentence. Another example with gerund phrases. I and my classmates enjoy reading Filipino proverbs called Salawi Kain. The gerund phrase in this sentence is reading Filipino proverbs. The next type of phrase is the infinitive phrase. This contains the infinitive to plus the root word of the verb plus its modifiers or complements. For example, cocktails are written to teach morals implicitly. The infinitive phrase in this sentence is the infinitive to plus the main verb teach, then the complement morals, and the adverb implicitly. There is no need to cry over spilt milk. The infinitive phrase in this sentence is the infinitive to, main verb cry, and the preposition over. The next type of phrase is the participial phrase. A participial phrase contains the verb vowels which end in ing or ed or irregular form of the verb plus the modifiers or complement. Remember that the participial phrase always functions as an adjective describing a nearby noun or pronoun. It may either begin in a present or past participle. Let's take a look at this sentence. The crocodile killed by Lam Ang was over 15 feet long. The participial phrase in this sentence is the past participle killed and then the complement which is by Lam Ang. This is a participial phrase and not a verbal phrase as the phrase killed by Lam Ang describes its nearby noun, the crocodile. We are looking forward to the discussion having seen the video last Monday. The participial phrase in this sentence is having seen the video last Monday. The present participle is having seen and its complement is the video while last Monday is an adverb. The next phrase is the prepositional phrase. It consists of the preposition and an article noun or pronoun and adjectives. For example, the pain of the little finger is felt by the whole body. To spot the prepositional phrase in this sentence, first, look for the preposition. In this case, the preposition is by. Then, it is followed by the article the, the adjective whole, and the noun body. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. The preposition in this sentence is in. It is followed by the adjective one and the noun basket. Hence, the preposition phrase in this sentence is in one basket. Next type of phrase is the absolute phrase. Its formula is a noun or a pronoun plus participle with any modifiers or objects. It is commonly separated by a comma and it modifies the entire sentence. Moreover, an absolute phrase explains a cause or a condition and focuses on the reader's attention to added detail. For example, his love, stronger than ever, one swept her up in one last dance. The absolute phrase in this sentence is, his love, stronger than ever. This is an absolute phrase as it gives additional information about the sentence. Moreover, it is separated by a comma. Next sentence. They lingered in the embrace, their hearts beating as one. The praise in their hearts beating as one is an example of an absolute praise. It modifies the sentence wholly. 
the last type of praise is the appositive praise. An appositive praise restates, expounds, and explains further the word it precedes. Unlike an absolute praise, a positive only adds a detail to the word it modifies or the word that is next to it. For example, the Baybayin writing system of Filipinos during the pre-colonial period was derived from Kabi. The positive phrase in this sentence is writing system of Filipinos during the pre-colonial period. It is easy to spot an appositive phrase as it is usually enclosed in commas. But most importantly, this phrase gives further explanation to the word it precedes which is the baybayin. Let's have another example. Oral tradition, the form of transmission by word of mouth, shaped Philippine literature. The passive phrase in this sentence is the form of transmission by word of mouth. It gives additional information to the word it precedes, oral tradition. We are now done learning about praises. This time, let's learn about clauses. Clauses are a group of words that have both subject and verb. There are two types of clauses, the dependent clause and the independent clause. The dependent clause is also called the subordinate clause, while independent clause is called the main clause. The dependent clause does not have a complete thought, while an independent clause has a complete thought. Lastly, a dependent clause cannot stand alone, but an independent clause can stand alone. This is the usual structure of dependent clause. There is a subordinate conjunction, a subject, and a verb. On the other hand, this is the usual structure of independent clause. You have the subject and the verb. For example, if someone throws stones at you, throw back bread. In this sentence, the dependent clause is, if someone throws stones at you, it has the subordinate conjunction if, the subject someone, then the verb throws. If you look closely, this dependent clause does not have a complete thought. On the other hand, the independent clause is throw back bread. The subject is implicit you while the verb is throw back. Another sample sentence. Whatever you do, think about it seven times. The dependent clause is whatever you do. It contains the subordinating conjunction whatever, the subject you, and the verb do. The independent clause is think about it seven times. Again, the subject is implicit it's you. The verb is think about. Like phrases, there are also several types of clauses. First is the noun clause. Noun clauses are used to name something when one word is not enough. Noun clauses start with the following. How, whenever, which, whoever, why, that, when, whichever, whom, what, where, who, whomever. Example. How the boy behaved was not very polite. The noun clause is how the boy behaved. A noun clause can act as the subject of the sentence. It answers the question, what was not very polite? The answer is, how the boy behaved. Let's take a look at more examples. Pinong's mom did not realize that the pineapple was her. The noun clause is that the pineapple was her. A noun clause can also act as the direct object of the verb. In this sentence, the verb is did not realize. Then, the direct object is that the pineapple was her. It answers the question, what did Pinang's mom not realize? In this second sentence, the success of Philippine literature was when stories were passed down from one generation to another. The noun clause is, when stories were passed down from one generation to another. Aside from being the subject and the direct object of the verb, noun clauses can also be a complement. In this sentence, the noun clause, when the stories were passed down from one generation to another, modifies the subject, the success of Philippine literature.
The next type of clause that we are going to discuss is adjectival clause. This is from the root word adjective. Since adjectives describe a noun or a pronoun, adjectival clause also do the same. Moreover, it begins with a relative pronoun such as who, whose, whom, which, when, where, why, and that. Take a look at this example. Nobody who spits upward does not spit on his face. The adjectival clause in this sentence is who spits upward. This clause describes the pronoun nobody. Here's another example. A man that talks too much accomplishes little. The adjectival clause is that talks too much. It describes the noun a man. Last example. He who takes a lot of risk loses more than he can gain. The adjectival clause is who takes a lot of risk. This clause describes the pronoun he. The last type of clause is the adverbial clause. If adjectival clause modifies a noun or a pronoun, adverbial clause modifies or describes verbs, other adverbs, and adjectives. Answers the questions when, where, how, how much, or under what condition the action in the sentence takes place. For example, you must keep practicing until you get it right. The phrase until you get it right modifies the verb practicing. Therefore, it is adverbial clause. If you plant, you will harvest. The phrase if you plant answer the question, what is the condition for you to harvest? The answer is if you plant. This clause states under what condition the action in the sentence takes place. Therefore, this is an adverbial clause. That concludes our video for phrases and clauses. I hope that you can now identify phrases in each type and clauses in each type. Thanks for watching!